So in this part two video, I'm going to talk about action potentials. Action potentials are also called impulses. Uh, what we're doing is uh, we saw in the first video that we set up conditions for rest. And in this part two video, we want to talk about the action potential in three phases. In the first phase, sodium ions diffuse in. And since sodiums are positive, their movement in will cause the inside of the neuron to become positive. In the second phase, potassium ions will diffuse out. And potassium ions are also positive. So when a bunch of positive ions leave the neuron, the neuron becomes negative again. And then in this third phase, we're just going to return to resting conditions. So let's go into a little bit more detail. Let's talk about the first phase. So in the first phase, sodium channels open, and those sodium ions will diffuse in. Remember that in passive transport, just some of the ions cross, definitely not all of them. And there are really two reasons why sodium ions diffuse. There certainly is that concentration gradient where they move from high to low chemical concentration. But there's also an electrical reason. Remember that it's negative in the neuron at rest, and so positive ions are attracted to negative regions. So they're really diffusing down their electrochemical gradient. But these are positive ions, so when enough of them cross, that's actually going to change the uh, voltage inside the neuron temporarily. It's actually going to make it positive inside the neuron, and that's why that graph showed that spike up. So let's go into a little bit more detail. As it turns out, there are two types of sodium channels. This goes a little bit beyond what I need you to know, but I just want to, to go ahead and bring it out there. Um, there are ligand-gated sodium channels, and those open when some kind of ligand or stimulus opens them first. For most neurons, that's gonna be the neurotransmitter released by the neuron before it. For a sensory neuron, that, that those channels are going to be related to whatever sense that they detect. And so these channels open first and sodium starts to diffuse in. Remember that that's going to make it kind of less negative or it's going to cause that graph to rise a little bit. And there are also voltage-gated sodium channels that are waiting for the voltage to reach a certain point. And when it does, those channels open. And when you have all of those sodium channels open, now sodium's going to diffuse into the point where you're definitely going to get that characteristic spike of the action potential. So enough sodium diffuses, remember not, that not all of it does, that the inside is now going to be positive temporarily relative to the outside. We call that condition depolarized because we've kind of flipped uh, what the inside used to be at rest. And uh, that positivity is actually going to close those sodium channels so that we can begin the second phase. So um, on the graph, remember that all that positive sodium coming in has led us to this point right here. This is where all the sodium channels close, and this is also the point where the potassium channels open. Those potassium channels are also voltage gated, and so they're waiting for the point where it reaches that positive voltage inside. And so again, in our uh, little picture here, the sodium channels are closed, the potassium channels are now open, and now potassium has a chance to diffuse down its electro electrochemical gradient. So it has a chemical concentration gradient going from high to low, but it also has an electrical reason. Remember that at this point in the graph, the inside of the neuron is positive relative to the outside. So these positive potassium ions also want to go towards the area of negativity. And so when they do that, positive ions are now leaving the cell. And so that's gonna make the inside of the cell once again, negative relative to the outside. And so we have once again flipped our um, uh, positivity negativity. And so uh, here is kind of that written out again. In step two, the sodium channels have closed. The, pos the, the positivity inside the neuron has opened voltage-gated uh, potassium channels. So now potassium has a chance to move out. And when those positive ions leave, that makes the inside negative again, just like it was in rest. And so that's why we say that we've repolarized the neuron because we've kind of returned it back to where it was voltage-wise, at least at rest. So we've just got one more step. We just need to return to resting conditions. 
Um, both ions have had a chance to move, so both channels at this point are going to be closed, and that just leaves the sodium potassium pump open to do active transport, push my sodiums back out, push my potassiums back in, and that is going to return us back to resting conditions. Remember that that requires ATP energy. This is the only protein in the whole process that's doing active transport. All right, so here's just a quick summary of that. And then just two more things I kind of want to get across in this video is that one, this action potential travels throughout the neuron, maybe starting in the dendrites when sodium first comes in there and eventually making its way down the axon um, to potentially the synapse between this neuron and the next neuron. So why does it travel down the axon? Well, what I want you to imagine is that some sodiums are moving in in stage one here. Some of them will eventually be pumped back out by the sodium potassium pump. But remember that there's a really low uh, concentration of sodium ions at rest in the rest of the neuron. So maybe some of those sodiums actually make their way to maybe like the next part of the neuron. And maybe enough of them diffuse to that point that it actually opens voltage gated sodium channels in that next part. So now this part of the neuron is ready to um, uh, let sodiums in in phase one of the action potential. Maybe now this part over here though is uh, already in phase two of the action potential. So some of the sodiums once again are coming in here and maybe some of them diffuse down to parts of the neuron where there aren't very many sodiums and maybe that opens voltage gated channels here. So now this part of the neuron is ready to start phase one of the action potential, whereas now this part's in phase two um, and it kind of continues in that way. So this is a really lame animation, but I'm trying to get, give you a sense of this is all in motion. And so the action potential is kind of uh, making its way down the axon of the neuron, except that this really happens in milliseconds. Um, so it happens much faster. Um, I talked about the myelin sheath in the first video as a very nonpolar fatty substance. And so that just further encourages a, a charged particle like sodium to travel down the axon, not leak out. And so that's why myelin makes the um, action potential travel faster inside of a neuron. Okay, so the very last concept that I just want to uh, cover here is that um, all neurons fire action potentials the same way, but they'll encode whatever they're trying to communicate in the frequency or how often they send action potentials. So just as a quick example, maybe I've got a temperature sensing neuron in my fingertips and it will sort of give information about that temperature with how often it sends action potentials down its axon. So maybe at room temperature it fires this fast, but maybe if I put my hand on a hot stove, it would fire much quicker to send that information. Hey, now it's hot. And then maybe if it's really cold, it would fire much slower, and that would be the information about it being cold. And so all neurons fire action potentials the same way, and they can kind of give information about the intensity of that stimulus with how often they fire. So in this video, we really just tried to summarize how action potentials work. It's really just uh, two ions moving, which is electricity, sodium's diffusing in first, then potassium's diffusing out second.